Someone's cursing, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's puffling, my lord. Late night lunch. Someone's growing, my lord. Late night lunch. Oh lord, late night lunch. This is a post-Watershed production. Good evening and welcome to the show that bludgeons you into submission. I am your uh, head trauma and clinical avulsion, Aaron Bliss, and here's your violent penetration, Mike Large. Good evening. Mike, tonight's show it might be, well, unsuitable for children, as if any of them are. <laughs> yeah, what show has been? Well, true. But tonight's... It is Late Night Large. It is Late Night Large. It is a post show production. Yes. Well, anyway, tonight, uh, we obviously... We normally sneak in some lewdness and uh, maybe nudity, graphic scenes of an adult nature. We try where we can. Tonight, hopefully, is not going to feature any of that. It's actually... It's just going to feature violence, because tonight's theme is weaponry. I'm sure we can get some other things in there. I'm sure we can manage to be sexist, like... I'm racist, sure you can, and yeah. all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I don't know that. What would you do if a bloodthirsty enemy, armed to the teeth, suddenly came at you, <clears throat> willing to kill you? Laugh in their face. <laughs> Laugh in their face. Bust out Des and Troy. Right, and see them off. Yeah, if I didn't see them running, then uh, I just have to get their ass, and I okay. lay the smack of down on their candy asses. Of course, a weapon, arm, or armament is generally known as a tool or instrument used in order to inflict damage or harm to living beings, physical or mental, artificial structures or systems. In human society, weapons are used to increase the efficacy and efficiency of activities such as hunting, crime, law enforcement and warfare, or at least that's their superficial purpose. Weapons are employed individually or collectively. A weapon can either be expressly designed as such, will be an item repurposed through use, which we're going to discuss a little bit more later. Some of the uh, more imagine, well, I'm sure you can imagine, you can get quite imaginative with uh, repurposed weapons. You can have some fun with that. I think we'll have some fun with that later. We always have fun, whatever we're talking about, whether we're talking about shoes or growing. Or let's <laughs> say, yes, Mike. So anyway, straight after man had kind of man had become after the I created man. After you created man, yeah. and he became, he, she, became modern concepts of what we understand as homo sapiens. Yeah. Of course, they needed weapons, but despite being uncivilised, they were much more civilised back then, because they didn't use weapons on each other. <laughs> Funnily enough, they only used weapons for hunting, for their own food. So... What kind of weapons can we imagine that chimpanzees and early humans that, that evolved from them kind of used to Rocks, get by? I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Pick up a rock and like catch a rabbit or something and just fucking smash his head in. <laughs> a rabbit? Oh, I don't know, I just thought of a small animal. Chimpanzees Heavy, are really... Heavy-ish and blunt, they could just use to bash on the head. Yeah, because earlier man, obviously particularly chimpanzees, but the earliest men that, that evolved from that, they obviously like they had smaller brain, <laughs> lot smaller brains, but immensely strong, powerful arms and what have you. I mean, chimpanzees can crack a man's skull open with a single blow, can't they? So, Maybe not a chimpanzee. I don't know. I, do you know how strong chimpanzees are? Not as strong as me. Ah, uh, well, there you go. There's your answer. Yeah, I think you're right, Mike. Splitting things open with big stones would probably be number one. Although the first example of say cultivating weapons clearly came when one stone age man or another suddenly discovered that sharp things hurt a lot and could potentially penetrate the flesh of other things it was me who first um, oh, okay. discovered penetrating the flesh of <laughs> <laughs> right okay <laughs> Maybe. Or may, may, maybe that's what came about. May, maybe they they put two and two together. They they put the like like like, like yeah. we do in modern times, where everything's a euphemism for sex. Maybe they thought 
the other way around. They saw something, they saw a long s stick, a branch that had fallen off a tree, and they thought, that reminds me of, an, of, of something. And they thought, they made the connection penetration, penetration through flesh rather than openings. They chiseled away at the end of a, a branch or a piece of stick or whatever with a stone. Or around stabbing each other. We, no, Mike. We've already. Oh, sorry, stabbing animals. Already ascertained, for yes. Hunting. Spears. Throwing sticks and spears. And in Asian and classical world, they were obviously evolutionary improvements. What kind of things did we uh, expect from them, Mike? Uh, I guess they'd have uh, taken it one step further. So flint and stuff uh, mm. arrows and, and shit like that yeah basically we can amalgamate probably the next few stages into one by saying you know like the copper bronze and iron age whichever metal was most prevalent at the time was used to make most was used to metal. make um, arrowheads yeah. again it, it was it was variations on piercing weapons mainly wasn't it arrowhead spears yeah battering rams things like that although by that stage, there would have been like swords and stuff. Obviously, wouldn't just been open like spears. Oh, and true, true. I'm sure it would be interesting to know when the first swords were. We did come about actually. I forget when I invented them. I forgot. Okay, I yeah. can't remember. I'd imagine it would probably be some time ago. It'd probably be in Asia or something rather than over here. Yeah, I went over there and invented them. The Middle Ages, of course, was the classical age for swords. European warfare during the Middle Ages was dominated by, obviously, knights mainly. And massed infantry, mm. the old chain mail and big spears, jousting, that kind of thing. All the fun stuff. Oh, and of course, yeah, bows and arrows. Again, crossbows. Uh, crossbows. It's okay. very cool. Yes, they are. Yeah, well, hence why I own one. What, when do you think they first? Do, I, I don't. I, again, I, I'd leave the floor open to anyone who can answer this. I wonder when someone first had the idea of uh, setting fire to arrows. Hmm. When did you first think of that, when, Mike? When did I first think of that? <laughs> do you know what? Actually, that's a good question. What What do you think the when When do you, how do you think the connection was made? No, I, do you know? I don't know. I, I guess. Well, I guess when. I, well, all I can think of, or all, all you can think of, is is the human mind works very much in progressive stages. Mm. There's very rarely a leap where someone thinks. Oh, it'd be great if we had that, and it's well, completely out of the way. Well, they made fire, and then they realised fire burnt things. So no, 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 yeah, but what I was going to say was, it probably came about when people were firing arrows over like castle walls and that, as opposed to firing them into people, because you don't need to burn someone you've already just impaled with an arrow. No, but it's but fun too. It, well, it might be fun. It's yeah. more. It'd be more for buildings, wouldn't it? It's the same as. Uh, the same as the notion that, you, you know, trebuchets, the giant catapults. Yeah, 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 Now, of course, you know, you could you could catapult all kinds of things over castle walls to try and hurt an enemy. Did. And, of course, you know, who who was who was deviant enough to think, oh, you know, we'll, we'll put rotting carcasses of cattle and stuff on there and fire that over. Or yeah, even, even set idea. rotting carcasses on fire <laughs> and <clears throat> shoot over the castle walls. Yeah, sorry about me. Just keep, keep apologising, really, Mike, because... I, I do have a lot to apologise for. I think most for. of the... Uh, <laughs> I do have a lot to apologise for. Most of the horrible histories, I think, were featured you in some way, didn't they? Yeah, I, I feel bad, but at the same time, it's all part of uh, human development, isn't it? So of course. I've got you guys to where you are now. The difference, obviously, the major evolutionary leap between the prehistoric period and the classical and middle age period was, generally, the purpose of weapons changed. Yes. It's it ceased being about hunting and foraging for yourself and, and killing when necessary to feed yourself and it turned to solving disputes. Whether it's religion, domination of land, rich versus poor, king versus king, that there was no shortage of disputes to be settled. Hence why the prevalence of weapon yeah. really shot up. Well, violence ways. is obviously the best way to uh, solving any dispute, isn't it? Apparently so, yeah. yeah I mean, look, look how wonderful the world is with the way violence has shaped it. Yeah, who needs words when they've got, you know, when they've got a gun? I don't, it's it's I don't need words, I've got a Glock. Ah, uh, Glock. So, I'll cap in your ass. We talked about the biggest leap between prehistoric and classical middle age being that mankind began using weapons to turn on each other rather than animals to hunt and eat. Yup. 
the next huge leap forward, because like we say, when you went through the uh, the copper, bronze, and iron ages, these these kind of ages, before what we're about to discuss, it was main it was variations on the same things. It was mainly piercing weapons, swords, spears. They're variations on the same thing. They're lighter weight design or a more practical design, but they're all piercing weapons of some kind. Now, the biggest and possibly worst discovery or invention, whatever you want to call it, in probably mankind's history, was when gunpowder came makes, about from China. What makes China. you say that? What makes you say that? You know, I hope you're being facetious, Mike. Uh, explain yourself. <laughs> well, why, why I think gunpowder... is the worst invention in history ever. Well, I, obviously it's not. I'm well, probably the atom oh, bomb. Oh, Probably the right, atom okay. bomb would be. Sorry. But it's a variation, isn't it? Because without without gunpowder, the atom bomb would probably never have been probably conceived. Would have. Probably would have. Yeah, Mike, I can really see people who can't even discover gunpowder being able to put together an atom bomb. Yeah, I want to anyway, put together an atom bomb. Anyway, that was the beginning. To be honest, uh, gunpowder was just a precursor to how bad things would get. So gunpowder being discovered in China was pretty much the uh, the biggest of bangs, if you again forgive the pun. Oh, God. And that took us forward. <laughs> it took us forward again massively in the, uh, the arms race. So, firearms... Firearms. Mike, Mike, you woke up this morning, you got yourself a gun. I woke up this morning and I asked myself, is life worth living? Should I blast myself? For sake. Please. On topic. Sorry, I was... So, sorry. the European Renaissance marked the beginning of the implementation of firearms in what, Western warfare. What were you going to say to me then, before I started quoting Tupac? Oh, no, I was just going to say, uh, I thought you... Were... I woke up in the morning. Yeah. You're just stating that I woke up this morning. Okay. Oh, thank you. I woke up this morning. Good for you. Brilliant. Guns and rockets introduced to the battlefield. Yes. Mike, sum this up. What do you mean, sum it up? Well, the game's changed now, hasn't it? game has changed. All of a sudden, you got a gun, you're a bad man. All right, it's old, crappy guns, but you dominate someone with a sword... Mm. Do you know what I mean? You you That's you pop you popped a cap in their ass before they were even near you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? A cap in their ass. Do you know what I mean? They don't even get close here. All of a sudden, yeah, on that, an open that's battlefield. That's the key, isn't it? That's the key range. Uh, yeah, range. You, because you can, you can outrange the the well, but maybe out maybe not early guns outranging the bow and arrow. No, mm, no. but but you come to a good point. It it takes probably a lower level skill, doesn't it, to hit people with a. Yeah. With a gun, than, for, than yeah. A bow and for arrow. instance, any you know anyone will say an archer has to have incredible power in their in you know in their upper body for one thing to be able to string their bow and and obviously they then also need fantastic focus and aim to to be able extraordinary to extraordinary aim to hit exactly. someone from as far. Whereas and and not gun. forgetting they might be under big pressure. Gun, once you've once you've got used to the recoil and and you're able to hold it steady. There's, there's no skill at all, really, is there? They took a while. Well, loading them quickly would have been a bit of a skill. But compared to previous, the swords and, and whatever that, that took pretty much extraordinary skill and swordsmanship and, like we say, well, to be good archery. with a sword, any exactly. any Tom Dick or could use a sword. But if you want to go into a battle with a sword, yeah, and no, come no, out no one's going to stay alive very long if they're yeah. not very good with it. You've yeah. got to have a good sword play. All of a sudden, I've the gun sword play. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Just from you, but I heard it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we're going to rush up to the modern age, Mike. Aww. Of course, uh, of course, guns improved, if you can call it that. It's a bit of a bizarre way of looking at it, but guns improved. They got more accurate, more. How deadly. come we rushed all the way to modern age? Because we're running out of time for this segment. And Aww. besides, there's there's not much to talk about. Guns and it's rockets and bombs got a lot more. Talks about cannons developed. and stuff. Oh, well, don't worry. We'll come back to that. Oh. Cannons were great. Yeah. Obviously, reloading them is pretty horrible, but the cannons are best when you're shooting someone out of them, though, especially into a castle wall. <laughs> yeah, that, I always thought that that'd be a great danger sport. I used to enjoy doing that. Did Shoot, you? Yeah, shooting people out of cannons into castle walls. Mm. Yeah. I, I've always thought, you know, suicide by cannon would be the best way of going out. If if I was going to do it, that'd be how I choose to go. That'd be how you choose to go with it. Yep. Well, and you... shot out of a cannon <laughs> into a castle wall. Oh, God. Well, I hope you give me credit for it. I want you to yell my name as you're about to be dashed into pieces. Eli Aaron. Yeah. 
get out. That's it. The following section has been removed due to copyright infringement. Sorry about that. Fight the power. We're talking about weapons on Late Night Large. Going through all the cutlasses, cudgels, rapiers, scythe sickles and scimitars we can think of. Des and Troy. And we got to... We, it was a brief history of weaponry as we know it. And of course we just about reached the industrial, the industrial revolution and what wonders that brought particularly in the uh, the field of warfare and yeah basically guns became machine pistols and rockets became a lot more savvy and focused and destructive once the first world war was over where the guns were still pretty shoddy by today's standards technology leapt forward and we had then of course we had horrible biological weaponry chemical warfare like in Vietnam with Agent Orange and what have you. Effective shit, though. Some, yeah, well, of course. It does, its, does its job exceptionally well. Of course, there is obviously a question that if we were to plough the kind of money and expertise we plough into warfare and military technology into making sure that, you know, everyone on the planet had adequate resources, then... Then someone would come over and fuck us up because we weren't ready. Uh, well... That's a great white right wing viewpoint you had there, Mike. Cheers, I thought you'd like that. Yeah, so anyway, World War Two we all know about, and of course that culminated in perhaps the worst, most despicable weapon ever conceived. It was lodged on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We try not to think about that too much. No, I'm just going to say, did it do the job? So, the, did nu- it do the, job? the nuclear age... <laughs> yeah, it did the job. Moving on to the nuclear age... I made a joke, of course, of course it was horrible. Yes. But it did the job. Sound a little bit more sincere, Mike. I'm just saying. I'm just. So we're moving on to the Cold War. Just you because it's fun. The Cold War obviously was the nuclear age, and uh, luckily we didn't quite grow up in that era. But uh, it was an era where everyone was a little bit twitchy. It yeah. wasn't a very easy world to live in because people were quite paranoid about you know who's got on, what finger on the button yeah. any minute we could be wiped out who's got nuclear weapons and oh, ironically enough the proliferation of nuclear weapons and the arms race between the USSR and America particularly led to the concept of uh, mad or mutually assured destruction meaning that they had reached a point where no matter how much they improved whichever nation fired first the other nation would be guaranteed of knowing by the time the missile was launched and would thus launch a counter-strike. And it was agreed that they both possessed enough in their armoury to wipe out the entire planet. That So that horrible, horrible concept had a happy ending, because now, of course, we don't dare fire nuclear weapons, although we well, also... Not, we as also who's, not as someone who can fire one back, anyway. But at the same time, we don't dare disarm them either. So no. there we are constantly on the lookout and that takes us into the modern age so everyone's scared of everyone great exactly well that's the age we live in isn't it pitting everyone against each other playing on paranoias and fears it's the way the world works unfortunately if we're talking about weapons we have to make certain distinctions we need to make distinctions between personal weapons as in my penis handheld weapons as (laughs) as opposed to uh, small arms weapons (laughs) You'll be. <laughs> uh, I'll be back in a second. I'm just gonna get my crossbow. Do it. Do it. We need. Yeah, we have uh, personal handheld weapons. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what, Mike. While I'm making this distinction, I want you to shout out uh, an example for all of these. I don't know. No we examples. need. We need handheld handheld weapons. Glock. Okay. Versus small arms weapons, as in that would be used by a small team. Oh, for God's sake. Slightly higher calibre stuff. Uzi. No. Things like mounted rifles or cannons. The difference between skilled weapons... Like... A... Gun. (laughs) Mate, you have to be a bit more specific. For instance... Sniper rifle. That's better. Okay, sniper rifle. And unskilled weapons. A baseball bat. There you go. Long distance weapon. A sniper rifle. (laughs) No, no, no. A long, long distance weapon. Nuclear bomb. Okay. <laughs> Short distance weapon. A baseball bat. Land weapon. 
A baseball bat. No, Mike. <laughs> Ballet. Be uh, serious, a land weapon. That's a bloody land weapon. A gun. <sighs> okay. An Uzi. A sea weapon. A m- m- missile. <laughs> <laughs> an underwater missile. Uh, uh, an underwater s- missile. Submarine missile. Okay. Air. Air weapon. A missile from a helicopter attack thing. Okay. Fortification weapons. If you're trying to defend a territory, like you're uh, on a castle wall or something. Cauldrons of boiling oil. Oh, it's interesting. Medieval style. Yeah. Okay. Take it back. Space. Space weapons. Icarus or whatever it was on James Bond. Do you remember that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Goldeneye. Or, yeah, 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 Goldeneye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Satellite space-based weaponry. Yeah. There we go. So, Mike, basically, I was I was real clever, and I uh, no. I came up with a list of purposes for specific weapons. You bloody idiot! What what could you possibly want to do to another person with weapons? And I see how many of these you agree with. Not well. I know you agree with them. Try and give me an example for some of these as well. Okay, so. Hit me up, bitch. Okay, what about psychological weapons? What about them? Like, Give torture. me an example. Yeah, but what, what what kind would be psychological rather than body? Rather than physical? I don't know. Watching, making them watch something. They don't want to watch. Like, ma- holding their yeah, eyes open. Yeah, there you and go. Clockwork Orange, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, making that's them watch psychological some shit. torture. Or you could also suggest something like watching their family suffer on video yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But then there's like physical torture as well, isn't there? Like shoving the head in like an ice bucket or something, Cause it takes your breath away. Really cold water, doesn't it? Or, That's torture. Or, or, or wa- 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 yeah, water not... torture could technically be psychological torture. Isn't it, it could do because it'll break you down. R- rather than torture, we will think exclusively of weapons that are that are designed Sleep to harm, harm or kill. That's another psychological. Yeah, good good work. So, say you leave someone locked in a room with a camera. As soon as you see them nodding off, just. <laughs> Yeah, loud alarms or or, just come in and or shake them. shake them. That that's kind of physical, Mike, isn't it? Really? It keeps them awake, though. That's the idea. Don't batter them too much. Just keep them awake. She started off well, and yet again, you tailed off into nonsense. That's what she said. Okay, projectiles. <laughs> Projectile <laughs> weapons. Uh, crossbow. Okay, yeah, that's a good example. Explosives. Grenade. Instruments of execution. Than things that stretch you. <laughs> yeah, again, that's more torture. torture rack. Yeah, it's more uh, torture. It's a torture I'm rack, thinking, it? like, like I said, a, I'm thinking like a of noose. Harm, okay. Yeah, the gallows, that kind yeah. of thing. Okay, fire. That's da, 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 self-explanatory. But fire. you know, nowadays, da, 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 da. you you know, back in the day, you could have flaming arrows. Now you're more likely to have flamethrowers. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, okay, burning fluids. Like oil. Yeah, scalding oil. Scalding oil. Acid. Acid, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or even, you know, you could technically think of burning fluids in the sense of using them in conjunction with fire. You know, dousing some of the gasoline. Yeah. Piercing blades. That covers a whole host yeah, of Yeah, like swords. Yeah, swords, spears, crossbow bolts, arrows, razor blades even. Yeah. There's all kinds of... Anything that cuts or pierces someone with the mind of... Chainsaws, <laughs> with the mind of a not really piercing blade, are they? They're not, you wouldn't say chainsaws are piercing weapon, would you? No. Okay, let's be pedantic about it. Well, okay, blunt instruments. Baseball bat. <laughs> yeah, but Mike, you're confusing that with. Remember what we talked about? Oh yeah. Purpose uh, weapons versus uh, converted weapon. All right. You didn't say it had to be a purpose or. Okay, converted. we're talking about. No, because we'll come to Okay, so later. purpose, purpose blunt weapons. weapons. Blunt instruments. Purpose. Mm. What about a club with nails in it? That's more of a piercing thing, isn't it? Of course it it's is. It's a club. It? It's got nails in it. It's a blunt in. instrument. It pierces. It's a club. Just a club. Yeah, you, you Just s- a club. You still bludgeon people. Just a club. With Shut up. A okay, club. A club. Idiot. Choking devices. Rope. <laughs> okay. I, I might. I might add. My uh, penis. <laughs> I might add uh, garret string, cheese wire. Can't really think much beyond that. My... Shut <laughs> up. Poisons. Yeah, poisons. Self-explanatory, well, like, really. Yeah. I can't really add to that. Poison. Espionage gadgets. 
again. James Bond goes straight into James Bond. But what do we mean by espionage gadgets, Mike? Why is that different from a regular purpose-built weapon? I don't know. Why is it different? Because they're designed not to be detected. So you turn things that look like other things. For instance, like, like the, the like man the with the watch. golden gun. Like the watch. Yeah, or the, the laser man, watch. Thing. The man with the golden gun is the best. Because, you know, what is and it? Three or four pieces? Yeah, pen, lighter. And then the shoe with a spike in there, and you kick them, and yeah, then yeah. Like, a few seconds later. But the thing die. about the man with the golden gun is it was completely harmless items by themselves so he could get past any like frisking or check because no one would suspect it was only when he put them together so that's a classic example cyber weapons because now we're talking about cyber espionage aren't we like trojans viruses worms stealing information corrupting systems taking down banks yeah that's probably the modern warfare weapon isn't it of choice would you say I guess so. It's a different. Type I, of I heard. Forever, I though. heard it's the. I heard it's. I think it's the most, most investment to a new section of security for most countries is their cyber defence. Well, you can see why. Gas or chemical warfare or or attack. That's pretty self-explanatory yeah. again. Nerve gas or, I mean, chemicals pretty horrible as well. The devastation that wreaks. Okay, Mike, and another one that I thought was quite interesting to throw in there: booby traps. <laughs> babies <laughs> that's not yeah that's not a trap is it unless you consider it a trap for they are a trap oh uh, yeah True. fucking lure you in with their nice <laughs> bosoms but yeah booby traps in the sense of they're not they're not they're not weapons they're not proactive weapons they're only reactive yeah and they're supposed to be undetectable as well yeah and they're, they're related and they're related to the environment around you they're not supposed to be obvious yeah, hence. a great classic example of booby trap would be like the, all the stuff in Predator. You watched Predator? Oh yeah, yeah you have. But I'm oh, talking to this. Like, so th- good. That kind of shit. Like, but, Arnie's a bad okay, man. But, okay, th- let's talk about the basis, basic booby traps. For instance, a hole in the floor, a hole in the floor up, covered that people fall through, that, uh, or a noose underneath, or a noose tied to a tree branch that you step in and then it launches you up in the tree. Yeah, trip wire. Yeah, trip, trip wires, wire exactly. Yeah. And of course, they've got a lot and more sophisticated things. Hanging then. big log thing, you like you trip wire that, and it comes down and fucks you up. You're going back to Predator again, Mike? Yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, well, so as hard as, not to. As much as I'd like to talk about Predator, I think we should all night. Uh, all I think we, night long. Yeah, I think we better move on. Let's see if Wikipedia can enlighten us any more. Come on, Wikipedia. Because they have a number of. They've listed it also by function, which is quite handy. Now, they describe antimatter weapons, uh, which apparently are theoretical weapons, would combine matter and antimatter to cause a powerful explosion. So they might not be practical right now. No, obviously. Archery weapons, uh, self explanatory. Artillery weapons, again, utilise explosions. Biological weapons, we discussed, horrible things causing disease and infection as opposed to blowing people up. Mm. Nasty. Uh, chemical weapons, which again rely on horrible reactions, poisons, uh, potentially stripping the skin off and horrible things like that. Nasty shit, nasty shit. Energy weapons rely on concentrating forms of energy to attack, such as lasers or sonic attack. Mm. Great example again, Goldeneye. Yeah. It wasn't an explosive weapon, it was an electromagnetic pulse. Okay. Which, ba- no, an electromagnetic pulse basically, it works like an atomic bomb. But with the uh, but yeah, with the explosive yeah. nature taken out of it, so it sends through almost an invisible shock wave that knocks out any electrical circuit, and it was obviously it was used to knock out vital communications and or banking paraphernalia. Bank, so, banking, so, yeah. So they could uh, steal billions of dollars. Filthy lucre. Oh, so yeah, that's kind of energy weapons. Explosive weapons. That's that's pretty obvious. Firearms again, improvised weapons, which we'll talk about again in a bit. Incendiary weapons, again utilising fire. Non-lethal weapons, can't think of many of those. I don't know a catapult <laughs> or a spud gun. <laughs> magnetic weapons use magnetic fields to propel projectiles or focus particle beams. That's an interesting one. Melee weapons. Operate as physical extensions of the user's body and directly impact their target. No, basically, it just re- refers to like anything that's handheld, doesn't it? Like a sword. Uh, missiles, again, obvious. Nuclear weapons, 
primitive weapons, <laughs> which we've discussed in the prehistoric period, ranged weapons, uh, rockets, same, uh, suicide weapons, which come into other categories, but they rely on the person actually committing suicide in the act. Obvious it's examples Japanese. would be the Japanese Harry Kiri bombers and the modern day Middle Eastern terrorists, strap explosives, and of course. The reason suicide bombing is so popular is that with any other explosive, you have to rely on a lot of different circumstances to get it to detonate where you want, when you want, and you know arouse, arouse a lot of suspicion. With a suicide bomber, as they're willing to die, it's very difficult to stop them once they've uh, managed to reach their goal. Trojan weapons, of course, named after the famous siege of Troy, they now apply mainly to cyber concepts of uh, weapons where they appear like a good thing on your computer maybe they ain't a good thing. but when you open them it's revealed that they're some kind of uh, device to harm your computer or harness information so Mike why don't we talk about purpose weapons versus converted weapons what's right. the distinction so a purpose weapon is obviously a weapon that is built and designed for the purpose of being a weapon a gun and obviously non-purpose would be a uh, pool cue. Yeah, that's a good example. So it's, you know, it's obviously designed to be a pool cue to play pool with, but obviously, you know, you pick it up, you snap it in half, you start stabbing people. <laughs> or, you, or you just pick it up, you swing it round, you know, heavy end round someone's temple. All good right. night, see you later. There's an argument that almost anything you can imagine could be a converted weapon. Absolutely anything you can imagine. I mean, if you look at classic dramas, crime dramas, especially, you know, a great example, Cluedo. You know, Professor, yeah, Professor Plum using the old candlesticks. Candlesticks aren't weapons, are they? They bloody are. Especially, right especially if they're lit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'd be quite funny. Basically, most converted weapons are generally used as blunt instruments, aren't they? You know, you smash them over the head with pretty much anything. Gla yeah. Glass bottle, telephone. Brick. Brick. Anything. Probably not a blade of grass, but... Mm. Anyway, there was an... In not a single blade of grass. Sporting. But... Sporting goods make good converted weapons, don't they? Baseball bat. There was an interesting thing, uh, <laughs> I heard it in the bill once, where uh, one of the coppers said, how many people in this neighbourhood do you think own baseball bats and how many of them do you think play baseball yeah it's true so there you go I mean if you were to if you were to categorise you know make a census of every person who owned a baseball bat say in the London area how many of them do you think would be gangsters or unsavoury characters as opposed to sportsmen put it this way probably 0.1% of them play baseball yeah probably even less probably less than that yeah yeah so it's pr pretty ridiculous to be honest and of course, do you think our weapons laws are adequate? Because obviously you can still buy decorative swords and things like that, but then, you know, you get the odd, especially if people have mental illnesses, do you think Do you think it's too easy for people to buy Personally, one? I'd never have sold you that fucking crossbow. You're far too unstable. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. The problem is with a crossbow, of course, is that it's very easily traceable. Someone's uh, lying dead in the street with a crossbow bolt through them. How many people in this neighbourhood own crossbows? Probably not many. Thus, that prevents me from... Although, like you say, it's, complete, if, if it's a completely job, different it if, yeah, if you're a nutcase. Because if a nutcase has a samurai sword, then you know, you're fairly certain it's going to end up messy. They're not, they're not going to have the faculty to think, oh, wait, people I'm the, I'm the only person me. in the neighbourhood with the samurai sword. Yeah. Mike, where do you stand on the weapons for self-defence? You mean, like, should people be allowed to have, like, a gun in their home? Like, for yeah. Instance, in case Not necessarily a gun, because hopefully we'll never ever be in the bat. United States. Yeah, exactly. How, how do you stand on the notion that, say, a big hulking brute has a baseball bat, and you, you know you've never, ever seen him play baseball? I mean, do you think those kind of people should have any kind of... You know, questioning or whatever when they purchase these things. Well, if, well, if it's for self-defense, like you say, like to keep by his bed or something. Yeah. Like my mum does. Keeps what? Baseball bat. Your mum has a baseball bat. Yep, my mum's got a baseball bat. 
with all due respect, though, a baseball bat's only going to be as effective as the person who's swinging it. Yes, so she's good arms, no, she's feeble. <laughs> Fair enough. It she makes probably, her feel safe. She probably can't even pick it up. Well, there you go. It makes her feel safe. I guess that's all right. Uh, we should probably say you're not generally allowed to carry weapons on you, are you? Because you'll get a lot of kids carrying little knives in their pockets. Yeah, I don't think it's a good idea for people to carry weapons because if they're there, then people are only get tempted to use them. Yeah, but or you, more do you tempted. think they should be allowed to have them at home? Like hidden away, maybe. It depends what type of weapon. Because be careful. Because for instance, people have kitchen knives, and they're always at home. Well, yeah. Well, exactly. So I mean, depends what type of weapon you mean. Okay. What if someone had a chainsaw, but they didn't have any have hedges? Cha- <laughs> maybe they use it to <laughs> cut their parents' heads or something. <laughs> like defending that. Brilliant. Okay. No, I leave that. Uh, well, unless they're psych. Like unless they're a psycho, okay, hang unless on. they're psychologically impaired, then why why does it really? Like if I if I owned a samurai sword and I don't know an Uzi yeah. or whatever, like I'm not going to go around shooting people up and slicing them and shit. Hmm. It'd just be cool. <laughs> right, point not well made, but the point okay. is I can't see any harm in having in mentally like stable people having them. Okay. But then if it makes it more accessible to people that aren't mentally stable, then it's probably not a good idea. But how would you, ca- you know, how would you differentiate the two? I, I mean, side. Oh, for God's sake. What I was going to say, Mike, it's not as simple as someone coming in with their pants on their head and going, oh, well, you're mentally unstable, you can't have this. Is it? Well, that's what I'm saying. So I, I, what I'm saying is I'm undecided. Okay. Because a lot of people, it wouldn't really matter if they had any type of weapon in their house. If it means that that means it's easier for other people who shouldn't really have them mm. to get hold of them then it's probably a bad idea so it should just stay how it is okay where do you stand on the idea of animals as weapons brilliant absolutely brilliant okay throw hamsters at again people. Let's, you know what i meant <laughs> send the dogs would be brilliant we all know send that we all know that hamsters and gerbils are all the only, flying only used in sexual pursuits not attacking people <laughs> Animals, okay, animals is self-defense. So, guard dogs. You know, a lot of people dogs. do have guard dogs. So, you know, some I've heard of. You know, some feeble, slightly older people or older women who have quite kind of. You know, they can be quite fierce dogs. Probably well trained, but fierce dogs who guard their house, especially in rough estates. So you you think there's nothing wrong with that? Not really. Well, I don't know. It's do you think? Okay. Do you think it depends? If, if I walked past someone's house and their dog got out and attacked me. Then yeah, I'd probably be like, "Well, that was fucking stupid." <laughs> okay, what do you think? The is same. there a difference? Is there a difference between if the dog is expressly kind of on a leash if it's and well held tra- held at you know in the house if as it, a guard dog? If it's well trained and never does anything but its purpose, but fulfil its purpose, i.e., scare off potential burglars, okay, or make that person feel safer. Like the, you know, that's that's the idea of having one, isn't it? Yeah. If if it never does anything but that, then yeah, well, well there's nothing wrong with it. But I mean, if it if it has a mad five minutes and jumps over the gate and attacks a child, then that's probably not a good thing, is it? No, but this is what I mean. For instance, we but all how we all know that there's a lot of wannabe gangsters at the moment who are using attack dogs. Not expressly, you know. I'm not saying they necessarily set them on everyone, but what I mean is they use them as a tool of intimidation as opposed to self-defence. You know, they walk down the street and if anyone gives them, you, you know, doesn't give them what they want, then all said. of a sudden the yeah. dogs are straining at them. A lot of crazed lunatics have gone around using, like, bread knives and things. Does that mean no one's allowed a bread knife? OK, well, how do you feel about attack dogs? Because obviously they're specifically bred for attack. I think they'd be bloody awesome if I had one. It'd be wild cool. Yeah? This really fierce, massive hunk of meat that just, like, looks like it could just take on an army and then like I can just give it a little order and it drops like on rolls on its back and starts like you know quality that'd be brilliant you know I can go tell it like go stand on the bed and do a backflip brilliant okay maybe do you think too like far. we were discussing I'd, think... I'd enjoy having one I think it'd be really yeah, cool yeah but so you, you what you think do you think it should be harder to get one though do you think there should be a lot more vetting of people who own them probably but I think that's generally the case with pets any type of pet anyway Really? Yeah. Mate, you can go into a pet shop and pick up a dog or a cat. I'm not like saying that. you can't. I'm saying maybe there should be more type of 
how many pets get like, neglected right, yeah, exactly. how many people have pets that don't deserve to have pets or mistreat them that shouldn't have pets hmm you could say the same about kids as well. Well, yeah, you could say the same about kids. But unfortunately, there's no way of vetting, vetting that. But there is slightly more chance I, of doing I it. Perso- I pets. personally think there is a way of vetting it. No, I do. I, I honestly think if, if you're found guilty of mistreatment of animals more than once, you shouldn't actually be allowed to have children. If you can't look after, after a pet, then clearly you're not capable of looking after a child. I think you, you're 19 years old and you've mistreat your pet when you're I 35 just, uh, I think maybe you should be able to have a kid I, just, I, mean? I, just, I just said I just said twice Mike also okay, or, also also if you know we, we talk about the severity of it that's one of the signs of a serial killer mistreating animals in your youth and wetting your pants and something else I'm screwed then no rather uh, you lot you lot are screwed shut up. I'm gonna kill you all yeah. hot just poker don't up the don't, anus. don't get up in my shit no, don't get on my grill. <laughs> and you'll be alright. I'll, you? I'll have to use my weapon on you. Uh, if you're lucky. Ladies, if you're lucky enough, I'll use my weapon. If you don't want to be uh, flayed, run through, uh, bludgeoned, crushed, blown up, uh, sliced and diced, or any other kind of horror, be careful with those weapons. We're just off to find some uh, converted weapons. Plenty of uh, suspects around this room right now. Indeed, there are. Which one of us will blink first? 